Hi, I'm Kelly Givens with iBelieve.com, and today I'm here with Jessica Turner. She's the author of the new book, The Fringe Hours, Making Time for You by Rebel Books. So fringe hours are definitely usually not hours, definitely usually not hours. Uh, They're usually just very small pockets of time um, that often go underused or wasted altogether. That when you're aware that they exist and are really intentional about your time and how you're spending it, you can redeem that time for yourself and your passions. Uh, Typically they're found first thing in the morning, like if you wake up early um, and take some time for yourself then, a lunch hour, times of waiting. On average, we wait 45 to 60 minutes a day. And so those pieces of waiting, if you're not scrolling through your iPhone, looking at Facebook, you can actually be doing something that you really enjoy. Um, On the survey that I conducted, the number one thing that women said that they would do more of if they had the time was read. And so I think times of waiting and reading really go hand in hand. Um, Evenings are a big one, weekends. And so um, just looking at your schedule, I recommend that if people have no idea where fringe hours could be found in their day, to track their time for a week. Just like you do with weight loss or you do with eating or exercise where you track your activity, you track your time. Everything that you do, the carpool line and the groceries and the laundry and work, all of those go into that one time tracker document and then at the end of a week you can really see how you're spending your time, maybe where you need to say no to some things, maybe where you do have a little more margin than you realize and then maximize that time for yourself um, and for your passions. I think in the book you had mentioned a story of a woman in the airport and like waiting through the customs line or whatever and she was just reading and I thought, oh yeah, I think that we just forget, like let's just bring a book with us and then we have that time. So Right. And it's so important, I think particularly with the time of waiting and fringe hours to be prepared. So to have that book with you, um, for me I like to always have note cards in my bag so that if I um, have a few minutes I can write a note to somebody, but you've got to be prepared, right? Because otherwise the unexpected happens and you're sitting waiting or you're waiting a lot longer than you anticipated and you don't have something there for yourself. Well Jessica, let's talk about balance a little bit. You're a mom who has a newborn, you're working full time, you have um, obviously community that you're investing in, Um, you have your blog, I mean you have a lot of things on your plate. How have you found balance and how do you um, kind of combat I think that guilt that we sometimes have for pursuing the things that we love versus the things that we need to get done. Gosh, I could go in so many different directions there. Um, With balance, I think it's important to remember that balance isn't just how it fits on the calendar, what life looks like kind of scheduled out, but it's also how you're feeling. I think recognizing that and being okay with saying no, um, being okay with letting go, and I think also being okay with good enough is good enough that, you know, everything doesn't need to be perfect all the time, and I think once you start to embrace some of those Uh, philosophies, it can be a lot easier to say, you know what, I'm going to take some time for myself. This is something that I really need. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not do everything. I know in my own life, it was a big struggle for me to admit, kind of swallow my pride and admit that cleaning was not a strong point for me. Um, You're seeing this nice, clean little shelf behind me, and I promise you five minutes before this interview, I like just swiped it all to the floor so that it would look clean because it just, it was a hot mess. Um, And so for me, I needed to say, you know what, I need some help in this area and have somebody who comes in twice a month and they help kind of bring the house up to normal. I'm not spending three times as much time cleaning and they're a lot faster at it. Um, I can use that time then for other things. It's just a good I'm happier because I'm not stressing about the cleaning and that sort of thing. Um, But it doesn't make me a bad wife. It doesn't make me a bad mom when I am like not dusting my floorboards, you know? And so think about if there's an area that you could use a little bit of help in um, and be okay with that. That that, um, that that's a good thing. I think that that is, you know, coming up palm up, this is something that I need, uh, and it can really bless you and bless the person who's helping you as well.